good workers. Workforce Development Institute was established as a non-profit in partnership with the New York State AFL-CIO. And we provide services to members of organized labor and working families. There's a whole range of services. Education training, child care, economic development, cultural programs. What is the, the face of, of the labor movement? What issues are workers faced with today? When people see themselves in images of people organizing and struggling together, then it becomes easier for people to take part in that organization and that struggle. It's difficult to take responsibility. Irresponsibility is a killer seat. It's killing the community. Watch the videos on MTV and BET. How do we give these people a voice and a space to not only speak and testify on their own problems, but then empower them in a course to be successful in changing these conditions? And I think part of what we're trying to do here is foster an open conversation without defining what the conversation has to be about, but just to create the means for that. Hip-hop is such an important part of music, poetry, the cultural side, of uh, America today. It blends in many ways with people's interest in progressive causes and it blends in the changes that are happening in the demographics across the country. When we talk about the workforce in this country, we're really looking at a quickly retiring workforce, whether it's a union represented workforce or otherwise. And so recruiting and organizing young people into our ranks is becoming more and more important, not only because we want to organize new facilities, but because we need to be able to replace the people who are retiring. We need to rise above these challenges, and in the process of resisting, in the process of surviving, we've created a beautiful culture. Not just a culture of hip hop, but a culture of work, a culture of labor. We devised a festival that we felt encompassed the goals of promoting labor unions, as well as connecting people with their lives, with their social conditions, as well as with what organizing themselves for benefits and better life would be. We had a constant education within the music and outside the music and around the entire event. What's the message in the music? And I like my performers that just came up before me because they kept emphasizing vote, vote. Hip-hop has always been kind of an underground voice where people were able to express things that were close to the heart. And of course, Union has always been someone that's going to speak out for the causes of the right. And basically, it comes down to grassroots organizing. And one of the things that's basic to grassroots is you bring it to the community. Hip-hop is, is a culture that came out of disenfranchised, mainly poor working class people. It's a method for which the disenfranchised can express themselves when they feel and have experienced systematic oppression. Historically what we'd seen right with the auto industry with the manufacturing plants was this rise of blue collar work mainly in what would be considered white areas of the country. And so as factories left and new industries needed to be created for working people, there was a large workforce in the ghettos that had no jobs that tend to be people of color that then got moved into the service industry as a whole. Health care, food service, right, busboys, porters. We want shared in America, the land of the free, overcrowded, understaffed, uneducated individuals of society. I want to hear you. There is the working poor, which is a large category of people that don't get talked about. People that have steady jobs but still can't afford health insurance, still can't afford a pension, still can barely make their rent. And so those issues are the very same issues that were coming out in hip hop as well. How could this be the land of the free, home of the brave, indigenous holocaust, and the home of the slaves? Both of them have been exploited by a very rich system that wants to keep them separated. And so the goal is if they could see their commonalities of basically being poor and struggling in America, then they can unite themselves and figure out how do we use our music to help our life and how does our life can help our music. 
When you go to work, well, you work like the devil. At the end of the week, you're not on the level. Payday comes, you ain't got a penny. Cause when you pay your bills, you got so many. I'm gonna starve and everybody will. Cause In a rapidly changing society, if we're not out there asking people, particularly younger people or people of color or people of different backgrounds to be part of this program, we're kind of cutting off our succession planning. So the idea with the Graphic Arts Project was to bring in people and tell them to just do the best you can. Do your work, be creative, and help us understand the way you see society today, the way you see uh, work, the way you see organized labor. The images of labor that are very popular within the labor movement are images from the 1920s, the 1950s, images of kids in factories, images of historic strikes and Rosie the Riveter. The reality is that's not what your average laborer is in the United States anymore. It's an immigrant farm worker, it's someone who works in the service industry, it's a woman of color. Part of the goal of the show was to start imaging some of that. We got maybe 50 or 60 submissions of posters and out of those, we chose 40 that we hung at the SEIU 1199 building in Times Square. In a number of ways, we succeeded. We brought in a, a huge number of images and representations and artists that hadn't been representing or thinking about the labor movement before. It was an opportunity for us to, to gain information, but it was also an opportunity, since we had some resources, to foster the creativity and support the talent of people who may or may not be getting supported somewhere else. The program started as a way of helping people to tell their stories using images. We started giving classes to the groups of people who have never taken any kind of art course before. You know, in, in this society, and I think in, in most societies in the world, I don't know, um, creative classes are often given to children and rarely to adults. So particularly free creative classes, I don't know, you know. People think that adults have lost their vision, perhaps, but people were thrilled to be able to come and take pictures. We bring in professional photographers and writers. We give people cameras and ask them to document their lives. I think the heroes are everyday people. Our nurses, our teachers, you know, I mean, the middle class worker. Because our plant is um, closing as of next year, um, we have a communication room. And in the communication room was a posting for the Unseen America photo class. What got me intrigued about it <clears throat> was there's a photography workshop. It wasn't about f-stops or film speed or any of the technical stuff. It wasn't how to, you know, use your camera. So the focus was really on the content of a photograph as opposed to anything technical. I, I don't know how to say this, but when I first took, just came here, uh, asked why or what what would like to get out of it, and I said I'd like to see some people learn something about themselves, and I, it, it did that for me. didn't have a whole lot of expectations on it. As each week progressed, uh, I felt more involved with it and looked forward to the next meeting. People don't see the feelings that happen when a plant closes, um, the things that people take for granted are not going to happen anymore. I called it so proud, <clears throat> as all of the students are so proud of their awards, what will they be when they grow up? Will they be just as proud as adults? Hmm. Everybody in this community knows somebody who's been affected by a layoff or a closure. So news stories will talk about, oh, the plant's closing. They'll talk about the economic impact of the community and that kind of thing. But the individual workers who are truly affected, they have to relocate, lose their jobs, uh, try to find a new job. Uh, yeah, I mean, without a doubt, workers in this country aren't seen. It's very difficult. The photography and writing helps. It's very rare that uh, we'll have an opportunity to have their voice heard through any, any standard media outlet. Those people really don't have a voice. I didn't cry when they laid him down in that final bed. I just looked at his oldest son and prayed for many more years. 
I didn't cry as we walked back to the trucks. I drove away saying, see you later, Gramps, with a few tears. You guys have yeah. amazing, amazing work. And the stories and the captures that you're going to have go along with these, you know, is going to say so much. I would like to see people not have to go through this. Or if they do go through it, to know they're not alone. When the factory closed, you found so many of the interesting things of the people who live in and around Messina about their lives. And it opened us all up to understanding them not as a figure or a, a victim, but as human beings that are assets that are valuable to the next company that comes into that area and are assets to all of New York State and assets to America. We're living in a time where people feel they don't have a voice and they don't have a place to speak up against the injustices they live in every day. And all of these projects, together or in their own separate context, are meant to give people that voice. Using art as a way to sort of draw people in and to bring relevance to the kind of work that, that labor represents. It has the potential to lead people into financial independence, but also to, to put people in jobs that are family sustaining. In the 1920s, Al Smith was governor of New York State, and he developed many models in New York State, which later FDR took to Washington and became national programs and became the New Deal. We think that if we're doing these programs now, we've demonstrated a model in one state that can then be taken uh, either nationally by the federal government, or it can be taken by state government and state federations of labor, and it could, it could work that way.